Hi, welcome to V101 TV. I am Tim Smith, at tsmith underscore co on Twitter. Don't forget to follow at V101 TV on Twitter as well. Today we're going to look at some of the initial configuration we're going to do for an ESXi server after it's been installed. So, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is open up our web browser and go to the IP address of our ESXi server. Now we've got two options to log in. One is use the traditional FAT client or C Sharp client for vSphere. Uh, the other is the new uh, HTML5 fling which is now included in ESXi 6.0. If you don't have the FAT client go ahead and download it and uh, once it's installed we'll go ahead and log in with root and our super secret password of password. Okay, in this case I've connected to an existing ESXi server that I have here in my home lab. Um, you can see in the FAT client we've got a couple different options. Our host is over here on the left. Uh, we can expand that out to show the virtual machines that are listed on it. And we've got some tabs here. Summary, virtual machines, resource allocation, performance, configuration, and some others. The summary tab is just that, a summary. It'll tell you what hardware you're running on, what version of ESXi you're running, CPU, RAM, license count, a uh, good snapshot of the usage of CPU and RAM here, and your data stores, which is your storage for your virtual machines, and also the networks that are on here. We're going to focus today on the configuration tab. Uh, assuming this would be a brand new ESXi server, we're going to cover just some of the things that we'll need to get set up ahead of time. So let's start taking a look at some of the options here. Health status. Um, if you've got an HP, Dell, IBM server, Cisco, um, it's going to be able to tell you some of the hardware health status here. Fan, speeds, temperatures, um, a great little snapshot of storage uh, of the individual disks if you have them in your ESXi server. Processors, again, just showing what processors you have, if hyperthreading is enabled or not, and how many cores are there. Uh, in a virtualized environment, the number of cores on your ESXi server is very important um, as we're going to be running lots of virtual machines. So the more cores, typically the better. Uh, RAM, I've got about 94 gig installed on this server. And uh, storage, these are our data stores. Um, in my case, I have a vSAN data store, which we'll cover in a later episode, and also uh, some remote storage attached via NFS. On the networking side, I've got one NIC attached to this virtual switch, which is this gray box going up and down. Uh, and these are virtual machines attached to that virtual switch. Also attached to that virtual switch is the management network, which is the IP address we connected to. So you can have multiple virtual switches on an ESXi host and multiple NICs attached to that virtual switch that uplink to your LAN. Storage adapters will just simply show us what's available on the server. I've got a QLogic Ethernet adapter that can be used for iSCSI, and I've got a smart array controller that I have local ta disks attached to. If you had fiber channel, uh, you would see a fiber channel adapter here. And the same with network adapters. This server has four NICs. Uh, only one of them is currently plugged in, and I'll see the MAC address and the speed. Under advanced settings, we can do direct pathing, which is basically taking hardware in the server and giving it directly to a virtual machine. One instance would be if you had a storage controller that you wanted to pass in directly to the virtual machine or a network adapter that only that virtual machine would be using. Power management simply shows that we're in a balanced state here. Um, we're allowing VMware ESXi to adjust the performance of the server itself. The server is set in an OS control mode. So sleep modes, uh, ACPI, C states, things like that are all controlled by the ESXi kernel. And we'll go down here to software. License features. Uh, you'll have a trial license installed now. Uh, I have a temporary license installed. Time configuration is very important. Um, we'll want to make sure that our ESXi servers are pointed to a centralized time source, an NTP server. Um, in my case, I am pointing out to the internet to the NTP pool. DNS and routing, also very important for your environment. Uh, in a production environment, you would have a proper domain name, so the fully qualified domain name of this ESXi server, and you would have an A record added in the DNS for this host, so you could access it by name, and eventually by our vCenter management server also. 
a default gateway, uh, in my case, 1.1. And finally, the last thing we're going to look at is virtual machine startup and shutdown. Uh, in a standalone or a single host scenario, this is going to be important because in here we can tell it that this virtual machine needs to start up when this server boots up. Or if we go to shut down this ESXi, ESXi server, go ahead and shut down these virtual machines in the reverse order. Okay, so our ESXi server is up and going. Let's go ahead and go to the Network tab, and what we're going to do is assume that we have more than one uplink. So we'll click on Properties of our vSwitch here, and we'll go into Network Adapters, and let's go ahead and add in a second network adapter. Mine shows down right now, but if I were to plug it in, it would be made available, obviously. Now if we go back to the Ports tab, we can view the properties of the vSwitch here under Edit, and NIC teaming. Both of my network adapters are set to an active. So once they're both online, virtual machines that use this vSwitch will go out either one path or the other. They'll be pinned to a particular uplink. Now I can also take vNIC1 down to a standby. And in this case, only vNIC0 will be used. And if that link goes dead, then vNIC1 will be used. We'll cover some of the more advanced features in another video, such as load balancing, failover detection, and virtual distributed switches. The VM network is the port group where the virtual machines will be accessing the network uplinks. And the management network is a VM kernel interface. This is the instance on the server that has the IP address and also can handle features such as vMotion, fault tolerance. Here you can see we have our static IP address set and we have the option of also specifying that this particular port group has a different failover policy than the vSwitch itself. Okay, so let's go over to the time settings. Now that we've got our network configured, time is very important in a virtual environment and in any network really. You want to make sure that your servers, routers, switches, and everything are synchronized time-wise. Not just for logging, but Active Directory is very sensitive when it comes to time. Our ESXi servers are no different. We'll want to make sure that time is synced so we can look at logs in a uh, congruent manner with the rest of the logging on the environment. But also we have the option to have virtual machines sync their time from this host. So first let's take a look here. Under general date and time, this is the local client time. Uh, it may be a little off, sometimes it needs to be set. Um, but more importantly here, NTP client enabled and options we want the NTP client on the ESXi host to start and stop with this host. Uh, the default is start and stop manually. And then we want to come into NTP settings and add our additional ESXi servers here. So I've got 0.us.pool.ntp.org and also 1. Dot. And I'll go ahead and restart the changes. So that way, if one NTP server is down, my ESXi server is pointed to another source. Now next, we'll want to manage our storage. Now in, if you have direct attached disks inside your server, then we can simply go to the Add Storage here. We'll select Disk slash LUN for local attached storage. This will also be the case for anything uh, iSCSI and uh, fiber channel attached, uh, really anything block. Uh, and we can do Next, and it will scan. Uh, in my case, I've already added the disks, but you will probably see the size of your drives here, and you can go ahead and give your data store a name. Another option is a network attached file system. Uh, so if you have a NAS on your network, we can point to an NFS share here and mount that. So for instance, we can point to a server and slash its path here, which would be, uh, in my case, NFS share and then we would give our data store a name. And we would click Next and it would uh, mount the remote data store and which would then be available here in our data store list. Now here we are at DNS and routing again. We can click on the properties and we'll make sure that we have our DNS servers set, our search domain set, I should add that in here as well, and make sure that we have our default gateway set for our IPv4 network. And last, let's go down to advanced settings. Here we can specify all sorts of advanced settings. Typically, we'll only do that if we're following a KB article or instructed to by support. 
but one area that you'll probably be in regardless uh, will be syslog. Um, here we can set a particular path or directory for our logs. Uh, by default this would be a scratch directory located on your uh, install path. So if you're installed on a USB drive, local hard drives, uh, it's going to keep all of your logging there. In my case, I changed this to data store name, which I have a data store named NFS, and a directory on that data store. So now all of my ESXi logs are going to be pushed to my NAS. That way if my host goes down, my logs are still accessible to me, or for some reason the host would be corrupted, my logs are still accessible to me if need be. Okay, and one last thing here we'll cover is the getting started tabs, uh, client settings, show getting started tabs. Uh, this is just one of the features that uh, are very handy for those new to the VMware environment uh, as it will give you a brief overview of whatever item you're in at the moment and give you tasks to do. Personally, this is one of the first things uh, that I'll actually disable uh, to make sure that it's just another tab out of my way. Alright, so we've covered some of the basic configs that need to be done to an ESXi server and briefly explored this fat client. Let's go ahead and take a look at the HTML5 interface. To that we're going to open up our browser uh, to the screen that we were at again, the IP address of the ESXi server, and we'll open the VMware host client, uh, which is just a slash UI slash URL. We'll log in with our credentials again, and a wonderful HTML5 client is available to us. Well, we'll have pretty much most of the settings that we need. Um, you can see we've got a nice snapshot here of the server, uh, memory, CPU, storage usage, uh, all the information of what this server is, um, and a little bit of a performance graph down here as well. Uh, here we can go to manage, and you can see most of the settings are available again to us, time and date, uh, hardware, advanced settings, um, and then security and users, which in our case is just the root user, although you can add additional local users. We also have the option to see some performance graphs here um, for the ESXi server in this standalone client. So this is a new client uh, just released with update 2. Um, obviously the old c -sharp client is still available, however in the next releases um, I would expect there not to be a c -sharp client anymore and that this embedded HTML5 client will be the way to go. So in the next episode we are going to uh, get a virtual machine configured and uh, get Windows installed in that virtual machine. So stay tuned and please subscribe.